Hey, it's Gabby Roman here, and today's video is a little different than normal. In the next several days, I'm releasing a free training series on how to start building your Bubble app better, faster, and smarter. If you're new to building apps, or you just want to improve on the knowledge that you already have, then this free series is perfect for you. The clip you're about to watch has been pulled directly from the free training, just to give you a little taste of what to expect. So check out the video and make sure to sign up for your free training by clicking on the link in the description below. Okay, so let's say I want to build a project management app and I want users to be able to create a list of tasks for their project. So I'm gonna start in the database to create the data we need in order to save tasks in the database. First thing I'm gonna do is create a new data type. So in here, I'm gonna type in the word task. So I'll hit create. Now I have my new data type, and now I can start creating new fields for the task. So these are things that describe the task. It can be the name of the task. Uh, we have some built-in fields here already. We know who created the task. We'll know what date and time the task was created. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create just a couple fields to get started. The first thing I'll create is a name so that I can label the task and I know exactly what it's for. So the field name is just gonna be name, and then the field type is gonna be text. This is just a plain text value for the name field. You can see I actually have a few different options for what type of field this can be. So I'll select text and then create. Great, now I'm gonna create another field that I'm gonna call complete. The field type for this complete field is gonna be a yes, no value. So the task either will or will not be complete. I'm gonna create that field. And now I have two fields to help describe the task. This is a very basic core start for this type of data. And with this alone, I can start to create uh, my design on the design page. So I'm gonna go over to the design tab and let's start creating the form for the user to use to create tasks. So the first thing I need to add is an input so the user can type in the name of the task. I'm gonna go over to my elements, scroll down just a little bit and select input here. So now I'm gonna click and drag that input onto the page. Now I have uh, this ready for the user to type in. I'll give this a placeholder so the user knows exactly what needs to go here and just type in uh, name of task. Great, and the format of this input is still just a text because that's all it is. It's not a number, it's not a date, it's a text. The next thing I wanna add is a button so that the user can click to confirm the name and trigger the workflow to create the task into the database. I'll scroll back up on my elements list, select the button, and I'm gonna add this button right next to the input here. There we go. And I'm gonna give this button a label and it'll be called create task. Great, so now the user can type and then click the button to create the task. So right now we have the visual elements, but we don't have yet the link to the database. So that's where we're going to create a workflow to make that connection happen. So I'm gonna select the button and start edit workflow. That's what I'm gonna click right here. Now I can begin this workflow with this event already in here for me. When the button create task is clicked, some action should happen. So the action I'm going to add is a data action because we're creating a new record in our database when this button is clicked. So the action I'll go to is create a new thing. I have to tell Bubble exactly what type of thing I wanna create. Right now, I only have one custom type that I can even work with, but if I had other types in my database, um, for example, companies, uh, team members, projects, things like that, then I would see all of those items in this list here. But right now, the task is the only custom type that I can choose from. So I'll select task. And now I have to tell Bubble what to save to those fields for the task that I created, the name and the complete field. By doing this alone without setting the field, we would be creating a blank task in the database. It would be there, there just would be no values for the name. 
So I'll set another field. And now I can select which field I want to set. So remember, these are the custom fields that I created. You can see that there's even a shortcut for me to create new fields directly from this window here. I don't necessarily have to go all the way back to my data tab to do that. Bubble makes it really convenient for you to do things a little bit faster this way. But I'm going to select the name field. And then the value of this name field is going to be whatever the user typed into the input, the one we designed on the page here. OK, so I'm going to click in here and insert dynamic data. Dynamic data is basically a value that we cannot anticipate yet. It's something that could change or be different. So when I select that, Bubble will give me different options of dynamic data. Depending on what page you're on and what your data options are, you might have different options that show up in this list. All I'm looking for is the value of that input. So you can see if I hover over it, Bubble will give me a nice little preview of the input I'm looking at. You know, it's very possible that a page that has a bigger design, there's a lot going on, there might be multiple inputs. Um, so this is a handy way to identify and make sure that you're choosing the right one. So I'm going to select input name of tasks value. Now Bubble knows when it creates this new task to save this value to the name field. Now, for the complete field, I can do one of two things. When I select here, I can either say uh, to always save this as a no. Remember, the complete field's type is a yes or no value. So that's what has to go in here, either yes or no. That's why I see these options here. If I choose no, then that means every time a new task is created, it's always going to be saved as no because we're not allowing the user to change that value from the start. We have not given them an input. In the context of our project management app, we can assume that any new task is going to be created because it hasn't been done yet. So we can assume that by default, the complete field should be saved as no. Another way to save a default for a particular value would actually be in the data tab. Over here, where I set up my fields, Bubble gives me an option to set the default value. So I can actually say, save this as false or no anytime a new task is created. And because I set this here, I don't necessarily have to save this here again. Bubble already knows what the default is. Same thing with the task name. Bubble gives me a place to enter a default task name. So I could do a default like untitled task if I wanted. That would be in, you know, if the user decided they didn't want to name the task, but they clicked that create button anyway, it wouldn't be a blank task name. We would have kind of a backup and Bubble would insert this just in case they left that input blank. Okay, so now I have my design with my input and my button and my workflow connecting that design to the database right here set up. When this button is clicked, then create a new task and save these values to the task field. If I preview this page, I can test it out and make sure everything's working properly. So I'm gonna type in the name of my first task. We'll say discuss marketing campaign. Okay, now I'm going to click the button to create the task. Okay, so we can see that nothing really happened on the page. It's because we haven't really told Bubble yet to let the user know that the task was created. We haven't designed anything on the page to display their task back to them. We even uh, haven't you know, done anything with like a success alert message or anything like that. It would be nice if we can let the user know, some give them some indication that their workflow was successful. I'm going to go back over to the editor and then to the data tab. And then I'm going to go into app data to check out my database of tasks. Okay, so I'm going to select all tasks to view my tasks. And I can see here in the database, my task was created properly. Even though the user didn't see anything happen here, it the workflow went through just as we wanted it to. So I can see my first task record, here's the name, it complete is no, and I have some timestamps there and I know who created the task. 
So let's help the user out just a little bit by letting them know that their task creation was successful. I'm going to add another action to this workflow. I'm going to use an element action and reset the input. What this means is it's just going to clear the input. It'll remove the name that was used so that they can see something happened and they can go back to create another task. There's no extra selections that need to be made here. Bubble is smart enough to know that it's got, it has to clear whatever inputs were used in this workflow. Another thing I can do to help the user out and let them know they were successful is add an alert message. This is a really easy way to give them a confirmation and let them know that something was successful or even if there was an error. So there is a specific element for that, which is called alert. I'm going to choose that and I'm just going to add this right below the button. Alerts by default are hidden, so we're going to have to add this to the end of our workflow. I'm just going to give the alert a little message here that says task created. Alerts also only show for a brief period of time and then they fade away on their own. So let me show you how to set up the alert here. If we go back into our workflows, I'm going to go to the end here and add another action. This is an element action because we want to show an alert element. And you can see here, I have this available, show message under the alert section. When I select that option, Bubble automatically chose the element for me because it's the only alert on the page. And I have some settings that I can adjust. Maybe I want it to be on the page a little bit longer. I'll leave it at the defaults right now. It's going to fade in for half a second. It'll stay on the page for two seconds and then fade back out. All right, so let's try that again. Let's create another task. All right, so let's do a task called Organize Charity Event. Now I'm going to click the button Create Task, and you can see what happened. The input cleared and the alert message showed. The last thing I want to do is add a way for the user to see the tasks they're creating. It'll be much more useful for them that way. We don't want them to just create the task and have them end up in the database kind of invisible for them. So I'm going to go back to my editor, back to the design page, and add an element that lets them view a list of tasks. So the element I'm going to use for this is the repeating group. I'm going to select this group and add it to the page. This element is a very special one that is specifically for working with lists. It's very powerful. So I'm just going to do a basic setup here so that we can very quickly see the list of tasks that we've created. I need to tell Bubble what type of list this is. So I'm going to select Type Task. And then the data source is to tell Bubble which tasks do I want to see here. So I'm going to insert dynamic data and I'm going to search my database. So here I can do a search of my database. That's what this option is for. Again, I need to be very specific and tell Bubble what I'm going to be searching through, whether it's users or tasks or some other data type. I'm going to select task here. And that's all I need to do for that setup. This alone, this search for tasks, will tell Bubble to go find all of the tasks in my database. And that's what this list will display. But this group is empty. There are no text elements inside here. There's nothing to actually display information about each task. So I'm going to add a text element so that we can see the name of the task in the list. I'm going to grab another text here and draw it inside this repeating group cell. You can see that it copies for every cell below it. That's why it's called the repeating group. It repeats for every row. We're only having to design this first cell uh, because Bubble is smart enough to know whatever we do to the first task here, it will do for all of the other ones as well. They'll follow a pattern. So for this text, I just wanted to see the task's name. So again, for this text, I'm going to insert dynamic data and display the current cell's task's name. Great, so now I'm going to preview this page once more. And here I can see my repeating group displaying the list of tasks. What's great now is that I can add another task and, have, and see it automatically show up in this list. It's a really great instant feedback for the user.
So I'm going to do that now. We'll do another task called collect testimonials from customers. Create task, and there it is, instantly. Now, if I wanted to mark a task as complete, I need to add another button to my cell so that the user can interact with the task and update that task record. So I'm going to navigate to the button element and add that to the cell. This button, you can see it repeating there. I'm going to give it a name of mark complete. And now I'm going to create a workflow for this button so that it can make a change to the current cells task. So I'll start and edit a workflow and now add a new action, which is a data action. So we're not creating a new thing like we did with the create task button. Now we are making a change to an existing thing. So I'll select that action and bubble needs to know exactly which record to change. So I'll click to select the current cells task. Now I need to tell bubble, what are we changing? So I'm going to change a field here and I'm just going to select the complete uh, field. I'm not going to change the name that can stay the same. So I don't need to involve that field. And here, when we mark complete, I know that I want to change this to yes. Now, before I preview this, what I'm going to do is change the data source of our repeating group. So before all I had done was tell bubble to search for tasks and that's it. It'll return and display all of the tasks in my database in this list. But now I want it to only show me tasks that have not been completed yet. So if I click this button, Mark Complete, to complete a task, I want that to go away from the list. I want it to be hidden. So I can change this source to only show me tasks that have not been completed yet. To do that, I'm going to add a new constraint. This is just a way to filter this search. So I'm going to select the complete field and I'm going to set this equal to no. So the source is telling bubble, show me all tasks in the database where the complete field is no. If there is a task where the complete equals yes, then I do not want it to show up here. It'll be hidden. So now let's preview our list of tasks. Okay, so I can see all three of my tasks. And if I go back to my editor and to the database, I'm gonna refresh my data here. And I can see the three here as well. And I can see the complete values equal no for all three of them. Now let's mark one of them complete. Let's do organized charity event. I'm gonna mark this complete. So I'll click on that. And you can see how it was instantly removed from my list. If I go back to my database and refresh my data real quick here, you can see that this one has been changed to yes. So we've properly updated this task record and the user gets instant feedback from the design that we created to see that that task is no longer uh, pending, it's already been done, and these are the ones that they're left with.